QuickBooks Online 2023. Recurring transactions, invoice versus sales receipts. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switching the view down below. We're gonna duplicate some tabs to put our major financial statement reports in as we do every time. Right click in the tab up top to do so, duplicate that is, then we're gonna duplicate the duplication process, right clicking and duplicate again. Back to the tab to the middle going down to the reports on the left hand side we want to open up one of the favorites the balance sheet report as it's thinking go to tab to the right reports on the left hand side this time we want the profit and loss the income statement i'm going to close up the hamburger and just uh put in the range so we're going to go from 010123 tab 123123 tab january to december 2023 we're going to run it to refresh it and then tab to the left, same thing, closing the hamburger, scrolling up and changing that ranging. 010123 tab, 123123, and then you gotta run it to refresh it. Just like I do every morning, running to refresh. Just kidding. I don't actually run every morning and I'm, I'm not refreshed. But any case, on to business. We're looking at the recurring transactions and there's two major ones that we can take a look at with the sales with the sales type of transactions. That's an invoice and a sales receipt. So in prior presentations, we talked about turning on the QuickBooks payments, which you can find in the cog up top in the accounting. And then in the payments options, you have the QuickBooks uh, payments. The next, and what that does of course, is allow the customer more options to be paying us at the expense of possible fees related to different payment options. The next thing we might wanna do is try to automate some of the sales transactions. Two ways we can do that, we can make a reoccurring invoice and give the client, that'll give basically the customer more options to say if they wanna be automatically paying the series of reoccurring invoices as they will be receiving them, or we can try to automate the sales receipt, which will basically be more like automatic uh, payments that will be set up. Now you can recall the differences in our flowchart. This is the desktop version flowchart, but it's the same thing for the online version. We're just looking at our sales cycle. The invoice is the form typically used when you did the work first and then you bill the client. But if you have a repeat bill for some kind of service item that is happening, you could use of course an invoice that will be sent out periodically like every month and then on the recipient side, they can determine whether or not they're going to try to like automate the invoices they're going to be receiving. So you have a little less control of automating, you know, the actual payment, the facilitation of the payment in that method. The other form is the sales receipt, which traditionally we can imagine is the form when you're at actually a cash register and you're getting paid at the same time you do the work. If you're going to set automatic payments that automatically get paid, uh, rather than having the invoice that then gives the option to get paid and, or possibly an option to automate it on the customer side, then the sales receipt you would think would be the form that you can do that with because that's the form that, that's going to say that there's going to be the payment happening at that point in time. So if you can automate the sales receipt instead of going in and out of accounts receivable, it's going to go directly to the payment on the sales receipt. So that's the two options. Now there's a couple different ways we can get into the automation. So for example, if I hit the plus button, just our normal invoice, I can go into invoices here and 
this is the new look on the invoice. So, so notice that you might have the old look uh, and you can you still have similar options typically under each of the each of the two looks. It's it's uh, but you might have to uh, get into those options in a little bit different way. So that's the that's the idea. But the, they have an automation thing down here. So if you don't see that, you can hit the manage, and then here's the automation. And notice the difference of this invoice when I add uh, the recurring invoice here. It basically pops into a recurring invoice which is formatted like this. So now we've got some more fields up top to put in that series of payment uh, information. So I'm going to close that out. We'll go back into it in a second, closing that out just to note that if I go to the plus button up top and I go into a uh, receive payment form, I'm uh, not a receive payment. Hold on a second. I want to go into a sales receipt, a sales receipt form. The other one, the other sales type form, you don't have that little thing over here that, that goes to the uh, automation uh, item. Uh, you could try to have payments that are recurring if you take a look at the payment option and you set up like a credit card, right? You go down to the credit card and then you enter the credit card details. So you might be able to do that possibly even at, without the, uh, the, the QuickBooks payments stuff because you're going to actually enter, enter the credit card details into here. So now you've got the credit card information and so on and so forth. But... We can also get into this information if I close this out by going to another area. Do you want to leave without saving? I do, please, por favor. We're gonna go into the cog up top and we're gonna then go into the lists and recurring uh, transactions. Recurring, tran I always wanna say reoccurring, reoccurring, tra recurring transactions. Shouldn't there be an A there? I feel like, anyways, reoccurring, reoccur recurring, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, do you speak English? I, I do. I don't get it. I feel like there should be. Okay. So, uh, in any case, here we have our list of recurring transactions and we can then add new transactions and we can add all kinds of new transactions. But the two we're looking at are the sales types of transactions, which once again would be the sales receipts and uh, the, the invoice, invoice and the sales receipt. So just let's take a look at that sales receipt first and say, okay, to note, it's a little bit different look and feel when you go into it from here, because now you have it listed as a recurring sales receipt, as opposed to just changing like the payment option, uh, basically down below. So let's do a couple of these. Uh, I'm going to close this out and we'll just make believe we're populating these items. I'm going to start with the invoice. So the invoice will give more optionality to the customer. We'll have a reoccurring invoice. And again, they can decide on their end whether they're going to, how they're going to automate the, the payments on the invoice versus the sales receipt, which once set up should be kind of automated if we get the automation process set up is the general idea as I understand. So we're going to say new. Let's do the invoice first. Invoice. And now, instead of putting the template name, I could just choose a customer, customer J customer, for example, that has an email address. They typically are gonna need one and it populates the template name up top. Now you could adjust the template name once you have done that, possibly if you have multiple reoccurring, recurring, <laughs> reoccurring customer uh, uh, J here. So you could say, recurring one, two, three or something for that customer, but I'll just take the customer name, which populated automatically. We can either schedule this reminder or uh, unscheduled. Now the reminder is gonna give us basically a reminder instead of actually recording it. I wanted to just do it, just do it, man. And so we're just gonna schedule it. We're not gonna create days uh, in advance. We're not gonna create it, you know, before we send it out. You could, you know, think about possibly a situation where you want to create the invoice uh, maybe before it's before it's automated to send out possibly but we're going to leave that blank customer we've got the email address is important and then the options send uh, automatically send emails so i'm going to say yes automatically send the emails print later include unbilled uh charges i'm not going to include unbilled charges those would be charges 
like if we enter time or if we're using billable items on expense forms and we're trying to pull them into the invoicing process and possibly if you already have an invoice that's going out every month then you might be that would be pretty pretty neat pretty nice system if you can actually because usually when you have these invoices that go out automatically you would need them to be the same in terms of what you're putting down here however if you're billing your clients based on billable items such as time that you're putting into the system or such as uh, billable expenses that you're making billable that you're entering as bills or forms that you later pull into the invoice periodically it would be pretty nice if you can automate that system so that whatever you did that was billable pulls into the invoice automatically right and then populates on an automatic system however Usually you would think if you were doing billable stuff, you'd probably want to double check that the invoice is properly populated with all that stuff. But in any case, and then we've got the online payments. So here's the payment options. These are here because we have the QuickBooks payments. If you didn't have this stuff here, then you wouldn't have, you know, you wouldn't have the automated payments because we set those up. So because we set up the payments, which is QuickBooks payments options, these are the payment options that are there. We did that in a prior presentation. You want to check that out if you if you want. Edits will only apply to these series of reoccur recurring invoices. Uh, cards, bank transfers. So we got the cards. You can edit payment methods for all future invoices in the settings. Okay, so I'm going to say okay. Mui B to the end. Intervals. We can do it on a monthly basis, daily basis, basis, weekly basis. Oftentimes these things are done on a monthly basis. So on the day... I'm going to make it on the 28th so I can try to make one happen here uh, because it's the 27th right now. So I'll do it maybe tomorrow uh, uh, on 28th of every month. And then the start date, let's say it starts. Uh, it starts today, man, it starts today. And then the end date and you don't if you don't want an end date, it could be indefinite. So maybe you don't put an end date, but if you want an end date, then you can say end date. I want it to end uh, right there. Maybe there's my end date. And then uh, terms net 30. So these are the terms when it's going to be paid by. That's important for an invoice because the invoice gives a number of days from the date of the invoice in terms of when you expect it to be paid. So so and obviously it's it's going to be a different end date in terms of when the invoice is, it's going to be based on the start date. So 30 days after each invoice is created is the payment interval for these. And we've got the tags. If we want to add the tags and everything, I'm just going to go down here and say it's hours. Hold on. I wasn't trying to add something. Ignore that. Ignore that. Let's do our trusty $2 and a penny. Let's do, let's do one, one, uh 79 for a random amount a <laughs> dollar 79 that's what we're charging we're making big bucks over here so there we have it uh based on location sales tax so that's the invoice that we want to be generating on a monthly basis and so we'll send that out so i'm gonna say i'm gonna say save the template save the template if you would so there is our template we're once again back in this recurring reoccurring <laughs> recurring reoccurring reoccurring recurring transactions so there they are then you've got your options here that you can uh, use it you can duplicate it uh, you can delete it if you so choose and of course you can edit it if you need to do some edits uh, in there so i'm going to close that back out let's compare and contrast that if we may to a sales receipt so i'm going to hit a new one here so i'm going to say i don't even want an invoice i want a sales receipt i want things happening right then and there automatic payments sales receipt boom okay so similar kind of template so once again i'm going to choose customer j which populates it up in the template although you can change it if you choose we can schedule it uh reminder or unscheduled so the, so we want to just schedule it just make it happen just make it happen man and then i like to send an automatic email uh because that's nice to do to tell people hey i'm i'm doing a sales receipt over here and then monthly let's do the same here two on day 28 again 
day 28 and the end date by uh, or after after start start date is gonna be I just did that and then after two have occurred let's do that that'll be good all right and then down here we're gonna say that we'll have another service item services and we'll just say this is 1.19 all right so there we have that and so there's our our recurring sales receipt so let's save that template and something's not quite right what's the problem man what's your problem another recurrent oh i have another template named that even though it's an invoice they couldn't differentiate the invoice from the sales receipt all right this is a recurring template for a sales receipt quickbooks you should know the difference but whatever save the template okay so there's our sales receipts have now been created so in future presentations hopefully we'll see what basically a, an email might look like as they pull this in and what will happen when they start to create these sales forms but if i go back on over into my uh, sales tab we would expect then that in the sales transactions here we're going to start to see those transactions as they uh, start to populate over here. And if we go into the customer side of things and we go into uh, customer J, J uh, customer, that's that's the one we're going to basically see as the uh, as the forms, the sales receipts or invoices are created. We should start to be able to see them populating in here and be able to track them as uh, we normally would.